Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today we're going to have another look at Mr. Mark Sargent and go to Liverpool, England to see him demonstrate curvature of the earth. So let's cue up the music and get started. Now to start the video, the presenter attempts to use the old flat earth argument that objects disappear from the bottom up, not due to obstruction due to curvature, but due to optical effects. Now, of course, we've heard this before in another hangout where we were discussing the 123-mile observation of Mount San Jacinto in California. Red Pill Philosophy attempted to claim that that 6,000 feet of missing mountain was due to optical effects and compression, even though it matched the curve calculator exactly. Uh, I don't know if you knew this, Bob, but the, the reality of compression uh, throws a big monkey wrench into all blink tests. All right, so you want to sit down right. and say that over 6,000 feet of that mountain is compressed, but the top 4,000 feet is not compressed. Now, the next point that he tries to make at the beginning of this video is that refraction is just something that's made up to fit the spherical Earth. Now, of course, nothing could be further from the truth. Refraction's been understood for centuries, and it's demonstrable. The only reason the point is even brought up is to try and disregard the findings of reality. Okay, just to orient ourselves a little bit, here is the location of the observation, Penrith Bay to Liverpool. And the camera was set up on this small peninsula. And we can go ahead and confirm that that is the location right here. Now, I think that it's important to mention that this is obviously low tide because I compared this to the Google image and the tide actually goes up to that double white line just above the white rock in the foreground. I'd also like to make note of the fact that the 88 feet and the 34 miles match up to what Google Earth says this is. Now he starts off his video by panning the horizon in the direction of Liverpool and looking at several buildings. He claims that this sports stadium should not be seen at this distance, but I don't see any evidence where he proves that. Next, as he goes through this panning, he sees several wind turbines and the blades of those wind turbines are dipping well below the horizon. He attempts to explain this off by saying that there is compression. Well, there is a very slight inferior mirage present, and you can see that about, oh, a third of the way from the right side of this photograph where the little red buoy is out in the channel. It really is not uh, significant enough to account for the amount of obstruction that we are seeing here. He then goes on to state that the horizon is simply an optical effect and all these buildings would be visible except for that optical effect. Now to give the video an error of scientific inquiry, he goes on and identifies several of these tall buildings in the distance in Liverpool. Now while we could do this with any of those buildings that are listed, I want to concentrate on the building on the right, St. John's Beacon. And it is 151 meters above sea level to the top of that tower, uh, basically the top of the little structure on top of the tower, not including the antenna. Now let's take a moment and have a look at this. St. John's Beacon in Liverpool is 53.4 kilometers from our observation point. It's 151 uh, meters high, and our observation point is just shy of 27 meters high. Now, having a look at Walter Bilson's advanced earth curve calculator, we plug in our numbers. Standard atmospheric refraction, nothing special. And we find that 79.6415 meters of that tower should be visible, and 71.385 meters should be hidden by the curve of the earth. This is hardly an impossible observation from this distance at that height. Now going back to our photograph from the observation, we see the tower on the right. We also notice that the restaurant complex, which is the disc towards the top, appears to be more or less on edge to us. 
We can also see the ridge between us and the tower, which is approximately 65 meters high. Next, we head over to Google Earth, and we follow the line of sight from our observation point to Radio City Tower. And we line up that tower so that the disk of the restaurant complex is approximately edge on along the line of sight. Now finally, we superimpose the photo from Google Earth to the photo taken from the observation point, noting that the tower is 138 meters high and is on a 13 meter elevation, and we see that they line up very nicely. Now this particular image is probably shifted a pixel, but uh, it's a pretty close approximation. Notice that the restaurant complex and the enclosure above it are lined up very nicely. Also notice that you can clearly see the horizon of the water. Now, if you match that up with the actual height of the tower, you are seeing that just over half that tower is above the horizon, which matches the Earth curve calculator almost exactly. We could measure it, but I think it's quite obvious just eyeballing it. Now just for completeness, here is a shot from Google Earth of the Liverpool waterfront. You can see the wind turbines there, and if you look at the diameter of the disc of those blades, you will see that the tower height is at least twice the length of a blade. Yet on the observation photographs, the turbine blades are actually touching the horizon. Finally, let's go ahead and revisit this complex on the left of this photograph, the one he said should not be visible. This is approximately the same distance from the observer as the Radio City Tower was. Well, let's go ahead and see if we can find it on Google Earth. But before we do that, please note how this complex appears to arise directly from the sea. We can see nothing between our observation point and this complex. There's no land, there's no buildings, there's no nothing. Well, I think he said it was near the sports stadium, and there's the sport. Oh, there it is over on the right. Let's go ahead and see if we can close in on that a little bit. There we go. Let's go see what's between us and where we had our observation point. Let's go ahead and back up Google Earth here a little bit and see what's between us and the observation point. So look at all those buildings and all that land and those wind turbines. And ooh, there's another peninsula right there, it looks like. There's a lot of buildings out there. I wonder where those are in the photograph from the observation point. wonder if they might have been blocked by curvature of the Earth. Now we head over to our PhotoPad application, and we shrink the Google Earth image of that building down to the same proportion as the one from the observation point. We carefully line them up, and now let's see what's missing. Well, just having a quick glance at it, I see that the stairway uh, in front of that building, underneath the long vertical windows, doesn't appear to be in the observation photograph. Either does that row of white houses or the church in the right lower corner of this photograph. So it looks like we probably are missing about half of that building. So here's your assignment, Flat Earth folks. Go find out how high that building is and at what elevation it is built. And let's see how this matches up with the Earth Curve Calculator. That's, uh, I, I want to say argument. that. I want to say that Mick West said compression is real, and when things compress, yeah. when things compress, you can't necessarily just blink test comparison. Okay, but how much compression? That's how much compression is there? Not that much. Not enough to hide 6,000 feet of Mount San Jacinto. Not enough to hide half the Radio City Tower in Liverpool. Not enough to hide at least one-third to one-half of that structure that was identified as a sports arena, but whatever it may be. Do you know what does account for each of those three objects? Earth curve. Pure and simple. Earth curve. 
it matches the curve calculator using standard refraction exactly. So once again, Mark, thank you very much for proving the globe. So I think my work here is done. Thank you all very much for stopping by. Make sure you hit the little like and subscribe button right down there. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Take care. Is there no one else? Is there no one else? This rabbit hole is too deep for me. Feel my brain getting real sore.